So this is a quick presentation that I made today for the, the systems uh, decision analysis and system dynamics group. Unfortunately, there was only one person there, so I thought about putting together this presentation because I think that some of the concepts are important. So the idea is how to apply agile protocols in modeling in general. Um, this is the roadmap of what the presentation is all about. And basically, the concept of uh, Agile can be summarized basically in the words e uh, iterative and incremental. So basically, you create small cycles. Every time you have a cycle, you end up with the, uh, 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 an end product that's functional, uh, but not necessarily complete. Okay? And then you keep iterating and incrementing your uh, end product every time you, you do this. So small cycles. This will, you know, exactly what this means will become clear as, as we go through uh, the different platforms. The idea is, you know, you have to start with the simplest possible and most valuable product at each iteration. So it has to be simple and it has to add value, it has to work. Uh, and then you test each iteration with uh, uh, the end user. So let's see how this concept applies, for example, for systematic review. So one of the biggest mistakes I've ever seen in terms of systematic reviews is to start with a research question that's too broad. Uh, that's a deadly mistake. You always start with the simplest possible uh, <coughs> uh, question. Now, people will then say, well, what if, if I don't find any papers uh, for that simple question? That's not a problem. That's not a problem at all, actually. If you cannot find papers for the systematic review uh, for your first question, you simply increment the question. You add a little bit until you start getting uh, uh, some answers. Second is uh, don't plan too much. If you have a simple question, the next step is dirty hands. You've got to get uh, to, 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 to do the work. Uh, so, Again, don't plan for which keywords you're going to be using for a month. That's a huge mistake, huge mistake. Uh, get your simple question and start testing your question in PubMed uh, immediately, immediately. Um, and then, you know, as you start testing, uh, you start expanding the question until you get it to the, what I call the right size. What's the right size? The right size is the size that fits into a single paper. Uh, for models in system dynamics, again, start always with a very, very simple question. Do not, do not, absolutely do not try to model, uh, you know, a system. Model a question. Uh, the question has to be simple. Um, most common mistakes, in a mistake that I, one of the most common mistakes that I've seen among junior faculty is to think that their model is too simple. That's, that's so wrong. That's so incredibly wrong. Uh, the simpler, the better. The best models are the simple models that provide you with some kind of insight. By adding stuff to your model will not necessarily, in most cases, will not end, add any value to your model. Uh, so simple models. Uh, complex models, they have their, their, their role, but not here, not now. So start simple. Uh, and populate with the model with info from databases and the literature. If there's no information, then, you know, something is wrong. Either, uh, you know, there's no information, period, and then you have to try to answer another question for which there are data for you to populate your model, or your, your model is just too complicated. Uh, and if it's too complicated, great, simplify it. So simplify, simplify, simplify. Decision analysis. Again, I know there are you know, a number of different scenarios, but I'll give you a single one that fits a decision analysis. Uh, or I should probably say here cost-effectiveness analysis. You need a therapy that's more efficacious than the standard, and you need it to be more expensive. Period. Uh, so, you know, don't go any further. Uh, now, if you're, uh, uh, you know, how, uh, what are the criteria for this? Well, if you're looking for something more expensive, in the beginning, 
in the beginning, it's not about you know trying to find cost data. You find cost data later. In the beginning, you just have to know whether it's more expensive or not. Take grab a clinician if you're not the clinician in charge of that, and just ask: Is A more expensive than B? If they are about the same cost, forget it. Move on to the next question. Uh, if you uh, if they are about the same, uh, if one is more expensive than the other, fantastic. More efficacious. You need one treatment to be more efficacious than the other. Uh, if you do, if you're simply hunting for a project and you don't know, uh, uh, you have kind of a broad area that you're interested in, but you don't know exactly which question you would like to answer. You're hunting for questions. Best way of doing this is to look for systematic reviews in your area of interest and start looking for areas where you know after a systematic review. One treatment has been determined to be more efficacious than the other. You will, you're going to end up with a list of different uh, 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 treatments. You can check the literature to see whether you know cost-effectiveness analysis has or has not been performed. And if it has not, fantastic. That's a great candidate for your uh, cost-effectiveness analysis. If you already have a specific treatment in mind and you would like to, to test to see whether you know, this could lead into a cost-effectiveness analysis, again, there are, you have to look for randomized controlled trials because you know, that's where the efficacy information comes from. So you know, don't waste any time. Use the filters from PubMed uh, for, uh, 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 for in association with that treatment for meta-analysis. Uh, in systematic reviews and try to find uh, whether, sorry, the filters for randomized controlled trials and try to find whether there are uh, actual uh, randomized controlled trials. I was talking about systematic reviews, but you know, if you find a systematic review, even better. Uh, and if one is not more efficacious than the other, one treatment is more, not more efficacious than the other, move on. Next, introduction has to be necessarily written in the first week. If you cannot articulate why your question is important and what's the gap that your future project is going to fill, forget it. You don't have an original paper. So it has to be there. Argument has to be clear and focused. Uh, and you know that's that's good enough. Now I've seen you know some uh, uh, some of our coordinators who despite getting these two things right, you know, they still get disconnected sentences uh, and they keep forgetting about the gap. If that's the case, the solution is incremental and iterative processes. Now, you need to be able to take criticism uh, if you're uh, willing to do incremental and iterative processes, what in our group we call haystack. If you cannot take criticism, I would say forget about writing the paper, but I would go even further. Forget about science. Like if you don't have thick skin, um, you know you're probably not fit for this. So you have to be able to take criticism. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Discussion. Discussion is a big problem currently within our group. Why? Most you know I keep seeing papers that have a very shallow uh, discussion. There are two solutions for this. We already have the protocols. We just have to use the protocols. Solution number one, literature matrix. So we have a standardized way of uh, uh, doing the literature review. Just need to focus on that. Number two, and this is very important, also in our template for the discussion, the discussion is all about discussing causes. It's not about you know, repeating the results. I heard this from one of our coordinators the other day. We don't have enough things to talk about. Of course you do. Uh, it's not because your uh, uh, study turned out to have, you know, you couldn't uh, 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 refute the negative hypothesis, so you don't have, you know, it's kind of a negative study, if you will, uh, 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 and you don't have anything to talk about. It's not about, you know, the study, you know, the results being positive or negative. If it's negative, fantastic. Let's talk about the causes why the study might be negative. Uh, and basically, that's the, the end of the story. Hopefully, this will be helpful, and we're going to improve the way we conduct these studies. Bye.